Today I'm going to do a quick video on how to field strip a 1911. This is my American Tactical 1911. It's a 5 inch uh, GI replica that I actually just recently did some upgrades on and I'll be doing some other videos about the upgrades and how I did all that stuff soon. Uh, but today I'm just going to take it apart for a field strip. So the first thing you want to do anytime you handle a weapon is make sure that it's clear, make sure that it's empty. Now in this particular case we can slide the slide back and lock it into this locking notch right here. Push up the slide lock into the notch and then the slide is held back in place and you're able to look inside the chamber. Make sure that it's empty. Check make sure there's no magazine or anything like that. Now the way I field strip a 1911 is I clear it like I just did. I hold the slide back, check. Then I release the slide but I am in the habit of not slamming the slide down on an empty chamber. So I grasp the slide either here or back here and hold it to push a little pressure against the recoil spring and then release the slide. Okay, so it's not smashing onto an empty chamber. And what I have read from people that know a lot more about it than me is it, when you do that, if you let the slide go onto an empty chamber, it does bounce around the inside of the hammer hooks and it can kind of bounce around where the sear and the hammer hooks interact and muck up the nice sharp angles on a good hammer like the one that I just recently installed. So I'm trying to make this quick so I'll try not to ramble. What I normally do is check it, lock it back, release it, leave the hammer back like that, put the safety on to lock the slide into position. Now on the front here this bushing is holding the barrel in. It's also holding this spring plunger right here, this little retainer or end cap. Okay, and that pushes in. It's under a lot of spring pressure right now. Uh, I believe the one I have in this gun is a Wilson 18 pound spring, maybe 18 and a half, I don't remember right now. Uh, so somewhere in the neighborhood of 16 to 20 pounds is what they normally are. This is a bushing wrench. You can get one of these to put on the bushing like this push down slightly and then slide the bushing the way I'm doing it right now and you want to watch this piece make sure that it is retained on the edge here and what's going to happen is if you pop this all the way out this is going to fly out under spring pressure you can do it the way I normally do it with just your thumb and turn it like that and then slowly guide it out but especially if this is oily, it's very easy for it to slide out. Now, what I normally do is slide the bushing back so it's in the center. If I have to push the recoil spring back a little bit, I do. Take the gun off safe. So what I was saying is I normally relieve the pressure, turn the bushing back to the center, undo the, the safety so that it's not locked anymore. Then I'm able to slide the slide back until this notch lines up with the slide latch. And I want to be able to push a little nub from the slide latch or slide release out this hole. So what we do is on this side push this nub so it slowly goes out. I'll do it on camera so you can see it a little better. Like that. This piece comes out. Now you're able to pull this out and put it aside. Now this whole assembly should push forward and come apart. So now your frame can be put to the side and the traditional style 
barrel and bushing, you would then turn the bushing this way and the bushing will come out. It's a little bit off camera, sorry about that. I'll do it again. Okay, from the center, push it that way and it will come out. Now, you can take the guide rod and the spring out and then you want to take the barrel link, push it forward, slide the whole barrel right out the front like that. And that is how you field strip a 1911. Of course, as they say, reassembly is the reverse of disassembly. <laughs> I will do that on camera as well. For those who don't want to watch that part, you can end here. So a couple things to look for. If you have a traditional setup like mine, with the regular guide rod that's not the full length guide rod, this is what it looks like. And if you happen to pop this off, you want to make sure that the closed loop end of the mainspring, the recoil spring, goes back on like that. And you want the open end of the recoil spring to end up back in here in the cap. Okay, now I'm going to put this back together for those that want to see how to reassemble it. We're going to take the barrel. Again, make sure that the link is pushed down and it's going to slide right through the front of the slide like that till it's locked into place. I'm going to take my barrel bushing Put it in again at an angle like this okay and then turn it you can even leave it in the middle or you can stick it back to the side i'm going to put it back to the side only because i'm going to slide the spring back in in a minute you want to bring your link back up like this and we're going to try and keep the link in this position when we put it back on the frame so you're going to take your spring and your guide rod slide it through like this and to see the two little ears in the back those sit on the barrel one ear there one ear there the round part to the bottom and you can slide that back so that it pushes up against this because that's where it sits when it goes through the cycle it rides back and forth and kind of pushes up against that now we want that like this I'm going to leave the cap off for now and again I don't want a lot of pressure now what I do want is I want to take this frame and I want to slide it on and I'm going to line up that hole in the frame with this hole in this toggle down here on the link the barrel link Let's see if we can get this on film. And you can do it upside down, you can do it right side up, it doesn't really matter as long as it gets pushed correctly. Now, of course, it's being a little bit of a pain because I'm, I'm filming it. But there you go, you can see it right there. And what you're going to want to do, I'm going to make sure that's open. See, I just pushed this link in there and kind of held it open. Now, you don't want to scrape this thing around because you'll scratch your frame and that's how people get scratches on there and they call it an idiot mark and all that but once you get it to where it's lined up you want to slide this slide back once again so that the notch the rounded notch is lined up over the hole again and you can leave this pin in here the whole time and do this once you know what you're doing and once it's lined up you just push it and click it into position It'll click up against this spring-loaded plunger right here and then pop out the other side. Okay, now your barrel is held in place and you can push the slide back forward, lock it again, make sure this is in there, take your cap, put it back on, and again you can do this with a bushing wrench or you can do it the way I'm doing it right now with your thumb. Make sure this is held in place and kind of clicks. If you 
take the safety off. It should slide back. There you go. That's how it's done. Obviously, anytime you take the gun apart before you take any ammunition to the range or shoot it or anything, you want to go through and do your safety checks. You want to make sure the hammer stays in place. You want to make sure the safety goes on and off. You want to make sure the hammer doesn't fall when you pull the trigger without the grip safety on. Okay. Uh, grip safety on and pull the trigger. That sort of thing. Make sure you cycle it a few times and it looks like everything works okay. But that's how it's done. I hope that helps somebody. Like I said, I plan on doing a few more videos about this gun and the upgrades that I've made to it recently and some of my trial and error of fitting the grip. Um, I actually am not done with this grip safety. I have to polish it and re-blue it, which I may film as well. Thanks for your time. As always, thank you for watching. Have a great day.